The next thing we're going to take a look at is adding our grid lines. Creating grid lines inside of SDS2 is basically just going to be another way or another word for creating our views. These views can be open and can be used to model in members as well as detailed to get our elevation views of the model. Adding our grid lines, we need to go to our layout tab. And then in our view slash grid section, we can see our grid line add. Or we can select GS on the keyboard or again, we can use our search tool. So I'm going to select this. And then it's going to ask us to select two points. By default, our point locator is set to our intersection of construction lines. The order in which we pick the points for our grid lines will affect how these views come out. The points we pick will also be our extents, so we do need to be careful when we select that because any member we add outside of that will not be seen. Once the points are selected, we are going to be then asked to name that view. So let's take a look at creating grid line 3. In this example, or for this training, I'm going to select from left to right. And as you can see, that does look up or north on this project. If I went right to left, we can see that then looks down or to the south. For this training, we do not want that, so I'm going to go ahead and add mine from left to right. Doing so brings up our view name, so we're going to call this 3. We have an option to auto pin to this view, which will allow members to auto pin if you do not have your member pins disabled by default, but again we aren't going to get into pins for this training. We have an option to make this finite or not. Finite grid lines will only go to the points you picked, and if that is unchecked when adding the view, your grid line names will extend to the edge of your modeling area. In this case, I'm going to leave mine checked. Next, we have our grid bubble setback. And this is used for finite grid lines to set how far the grid bubbles are held back from the points you picked. This value is a distance value. So I will leave mine at the default 6 foot 0. And next is our relative view depth. We have a top and a bottom. And this is going to set what elevations do we want to see this view from. If we take a look here really quick, on sheet S2, we can see our top of steel is 126 foot 0. So to be safe, I'm going to give myself a few extra feet. I'm going to go for my top at 130 foot 0. And then for my bottom, I'm just going to drop that down to 90 foot 0. This is just going to say how far we are going to be able to see this grid line. If we are anywhere below 90 foot or above 130 foot, we would not see this grid line. Next we have our erection view type. We have primary, secondary, dimension only, or placement only. If I take a look at this image here, we can see primary is going to be our topmost grid line. Secondary is then going to be dropped below that, or have the option to be dropped below that, and then add the dimensions between primaries and the secondaries. Dimension only erection views are going to place a dimension in there but not get any of the grid markers and then placement only are not going to be shown on those drawings at all. In this case grid line 3 is going to be a primary so we will leave that set that way. Next we're going to take a look at our depth check. And this is how far in and out of that view we are going to see when we have that view open. Again, we just want to see 3 foot in, 3 foot out by default, so that's okay. And then we have our drawing grid line pen color. So again, that's going to be the color that this grid comes in on the drawing. We have the option to change that in the model if we don't want it to match or we want to use our side options and the grid line type. And then we have the option to make it the default view and for detailing. In this case, I'm going to select for detailing and say OK. We can see that has now added our grid line 3. Now for grid line 2, I could come in here and select the same points like we did, or I can use my base grid line tool. This base grid line allows me then to select the grid line that I want to base this off of, and then I can go in and specify a distance. 
So from grid line three, I'm gonna go 27 foot six, and I'm gonna call this grid line two. As you can see, it remembered our relative view depth, the view type, the depth check. And then I'm gonna check for detailing and hit add. And then from there, we can see it remembers those values before. We're gonna change our view name to grid one. And below, we need to make sure we check on for detailing again and select add. Next, we're gonna take a look at adding in our vertical running grid lines. So for this, I'm gonna cancel out of this window and I'm gonna go grid line add. And this time I need to just change my point locator back to the intersection of construction line. And in this case, I'm gonna go from bottom to top. So that way we are looking to the west and we're gonna call this grid line A. Again, we need to make sure our bottom is from 90 foot zero and our top is at 130 foot zero. And then mark that for detailing. Again, I can use the base grid line tool, select grid line A, I can go 25 foot zero, call that grid line B, check on for detailing and add. We'll go, the next one is 25 foot as well, and that's C, check on for detailing, add. View name D is also 25 foot zero, mark that for detailing and add. And then view name E for detailing, but we do need to change the dimension to 20 foot zero. I'm gonna go and select add. And now we can see we have those grid lines in there. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is adding in our 1.9 and our 2.1. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and do add grid line but instead of using base grid line, because we don't want it to go all the way through, I'm just going to use the intersection of construction lines. And I'm going to add this from C to E. So I'll select my two points, again, left to right. Call that 1.9. And I'm going to leave those 90 foot zero and 130 foot zero. Mark that for detailing. Say OK. I could use the base grid line or I can just go in and select my two points and call that 2.1 and then check on marked for detailing. So now we have our grid lines in here. Now let's say when I'm adding a grid line, maybe I added this one and called it B.1. And I didn't mean to, I meant to just call that B. Now I can see I have two right on top of each other. To delete a view, I can just hit delete view, select that, and then I could grab B.1. Well, let's say I accidentally deleted B. If I wanna just rename that, I can do this one of two ways. I can hit the open view, select B.1, and hit rename, and I can just call that B or I can go through my utility functions to do that from our home screen. We can now see that is grid, not, grid line B. Now if I hit open view, we can see my show for detailing is not checked. So that's telling me grid line B was unchecked when I created that for the detailing. We don't see grid line B in here. So what I can do is I can either go in and re-add that and call that grid line B. And I'll adjust my bottom and our top elevations. And then mark that for detailing and say okay. And it's gonna ask me if I want to replace that. So in this case, I'll say yes. And then I just right click to close out of that command. Or if I change my selection filter to grid lines, I could then double click on the line itself and make whatever changes I need to there. Now, you gotta make sure you double click on the grid line itself and not the grid bubbles, as I cannot select those here. Again, we'll wanna return that back to our default. And 
And then the next thing we're going to talk about is adding curved grid lines. So here in our layout page under the views and grids, we have this drop down or combo. We can go add curved three point or add curved radius. When we go to add that, if I just run our add curved grid three points, I can then go in and select my two points and then set the third point to determine our radius. I could give it a name. Maybe I just want to call this test. Again, I could specify our relative view depths. If I want to auto pin, direction view type, everything that way. But in this case, I'm just going to say OK. And we can see test is in there. The other way is our add curved radius. So it says locate our radius point. And then I could come in and specify a radius and everything that way. In this case, I'm just going to hit cancel. And I'm actually going to go ahead and delete out our curved grid line. Now to delete that, again, I can just hit delete view, select my test view, and say OK. And now that it has been removed. And the last thing we're going to take a look at in this video is adding our plan views. To add a plan view, we need to go inside of our navigate section here. We'll just select our plan view button. When I select this, this is going to allow me to specify a reference elevation. So remember we created our AB plan at 99 foot 2. If we take a look at sheet S1, we can see second floor elevation is 114 foot 6. So in here, we're going to type in reference elevation of 114 foot 6. I'm going to say OK. Now to view or to confirm that that changed to the correct elevation, we can see here at the bottom our elevation says 114 foot 6, but our view still shows as AB plan. We just need to make sure that we go in and save this view. Because we haven't saved this view, we changed into that elevation. Well, we didn't save over anything, so our AB plan is still 99 foot 2. We just have to create or save that view at this elevation. To do so, we'll just hit our Save View button. And then we could call this Second Floor. Once we have that all typed in there the way we want it, we can go ahead and say OK. And now we can see our view shows Second Floor and the elevation 114 foot 6. So we'll go ahead and do this for our roof framing plan as well. If we take a look at sheet S2, we can see our roof framing plan is 126 foot 0. So again, we'll hit plan view. We'll type in 126 foot 0 and say OK. And then we can hit save view as. And we'll call this roof framing plan say OK and now we can see roof framing plan we can see that's expanding beyond so we just see roof framing and then we see the elevation is 126 foot 0 the last view we'll create for right now is on sheet S4 and that is going to be our mezzanine level so again I'll go plan view and that shows at 107 foot 8 say OK save view as and we'll call this mezzanine once I have that in there I'll say OK and now we can see we have that view mezzanine if I want to take a look at my different views I can simply select my open view icon to take a look and see what views are in here I can double click on AB plan and we see that elevation changes Another way I can do this is Control O on the keyboard to open that, and we can open up our different views. So again, second floor, we see is at 114 foot 6. Now if I would have saved or not deleted out that curved grid line, I could try opening that up. However, curved grid lines do not create actual views that you can open. Another easy way we can go about opening an elevation view from a plane view is just by double clicking on our grid bubble as long as our selection filter is set to default. If I double click on that we can see it now opened up view B 
and we can see all of our other views in here. In this case, I could double click on second floor and that takes me right to our second floor view.